And while we're on this topic of violence against women, a disturbing video went viral on the internet this week, showing members of an Ohio school football team bragging about the rape of a 16-year-old girl. The girl was allegedly drunk, possibly drugged, and had been accosted by no fewer than two members of the football team before being dragged from party to party in a semi-unconscious state. Now, we here at RT are choosing not to show that video. Frankly, the teens recorded in that don't deserve any more recognition than they have already received. It's not a video itself that we want to talk about, but how it was obtained. Members of the NightSec, a group that is loosely affiliated with the hacktivist group Anonymous, released this video to protest the lack of legal action by local authorities. It's the latest example in their vigilante-style activism where there's a lack of action by law enforcement officials or the government, Anonymous tends to step in. And they've promised to cause even more cyber commotion in the next year. Here's part of the group's newest video about what's to come in 2013. And they even leaked the information of 3,000 pro-Israeli donors. Joining me now to talk about some of the most notorious cyber attacks the group carried out in 2012 and look ahead at what is, could be in store for, for this upcoming year is RT web producer Andrew Blake. Hey, Megan. Hey, Andrew. I want to start off by looking at this latest case that we just kind of talked mm -hmm. about a little bit. Um, look into some of the things that they, they, that they did. I don't know about you, but um, this was the first time that I've really seen the group covered in a semi-positive light for releasing this video of um, these boys bragging about this girl's rape. So let me play you what, uh, what the media um, did really quickly. Yeah, sure. If it were not for social media, as Susan's talking about, how this became exploded uh, in, in the nation's consciousness, would this case have ever gone anywhere, made it to a prosecutor? I want to celebrate, even though Anonymous is, is a bit of a controversial group, I want to celebrate social media, including Anonymous, for what they did here. Hmm. Because this is a new era where democracy and action and people going to the Internet are now able to share information in a way that will hold prosecutors and law enforcement officials accountable every time. When, when they don't proceed with a case and people think it's unjust, this is, as you said, a form of vigilantism, only it's a good kind. So they're celebrating their behavior more or less. Um, it's quite a change of face from what we first heard when the group came yeah. out about them being completely lawless. You really haven't seen anything like that in the mainstream media in a, in a really long time, actually. In fact, when Anonymous first started getting any sort of coverage whatsoever, it was back in uh, 06, 07. And um, if you talk to some anons, they'll always point you towards a video that was done by a Fox affiliate in Southern California, where um, there was like an initial package done on this evil terrorism group called Anonymous that was just destroying the internet. They were hackers on steroids, and their mission was just to to do harm and get their lulls. Um, but you know, th things have come a long way, and people are actually starting to wake up and realize, okay, well, people with this group or who are aligning with this group are doing stuff where. Um, the majority of people, at least in our society, might actually accept with what they're doing. Uh, we saw that just last month um, after the Newtown shooting when uh, Westboro Baptist Church said, look, we're going to go over to Connecticut and we're going to protest these memorial services. And uh, Anonymous pretty much sent out a, a call to arms immediately. And there were Anons from all over the country who actually traveled to Newtown and were, you know, not just on the internet, but there in real life, trying to stake out members of the Westboro Baptist Church so they can alert other people of where they're going to be, how they're planning on, on protesting, what they were going to do to demonstrate. And they were able to counter that before it even happened. So they were doing this you know, real life vigilante work, not just behind a computer screen. And that did receive a little bit of attention, but that was something where people really looked up and said, oh, maybe these, maybe these guys are doing something more than just crazy internet hackery. More, and maybe they're doing something more than, than just raising alarms on the internet and shutting down websites. And, and maybe they're trying to speak a message with every website that they shut down I mean, is they, what they're that's saying. That's always been the case. I mean, if you go back and look at the old operations going back to the last several years, there's been, I mean, they're always there for a reason. You know, Anonymous has always been able to pull people together and say, look, here's a mission that I think we can all get behind. Let's try to do this. And in some cases, you'll have a, a few dozen or a few hundred or a few thousand people, you know, often have no idea who each other are, but can, can get behind 
find a common cause and say, you're right, we have to do this by any means necessary. And you know, that's exactly what we're seeing here. And every day we're seeing more and more people actually join and say, look, the, this whole Steubenville rape thing that we're going to talk about, this is ridiculous. And that's why we're seeing so much coverage right now, because it's something that people, like the, the American mainstream can actually say, it's, it's relatable. It, it's not like the CISPA or SOPA or PIPA, where, where it was crazy internet legislation, where only crazy internet nerds like myself really, really, really freak out over. This is the rape of a 16-year-old girl. People are taking this pretty seriously, and rightfully so. And Andrew, from what I understand, it's not that they are really trying to protest against the lack of law enforcement in prosecuting those two individuals mm -hmm. that they know were involved in the rape. It's that they were upset about, from what I understand, the eyewitnesses that videotaped and Facebooked and Instagrammed and mm -hmm. tweeted about that instance while it was happening. And then when local law enforcement agencies asked them to step up, they chose not to. Yeah. Um, is that correct? Yeah, the, the whole assault itself happened, I believe, August 11th, 2012, which is almost six months uh, back into the past. So six months have gone by, and a lot of people really haven't heard about this story at all. The New York Times did a great like eight-page article uh, a little while back. but. Um, after a while, Anonymous started saying, well, OK, look well, what's going on here. And uh, one specific cell, uh, at least that's what they want to be referred to, a uh, cell of Anonymous called NightSec, actually have people working with sources directly in Steubenville and have actually been getting, um, I've heard, upwards of like hundreds of leaks coming in from locals who want people to be aware of what happened and make sure that justice is had. Because we go back to those five months ago in August, there's only been two charges filed against anyone in this whole case, two youths who are allegedly responsible for actually raping the 16-year-old girl. But if, if you go online and can go through what NightSec has, has uncovered and what they handed over to a website called LocalLeaks, the stuff that they've published there pretty much show that this was not just like a one-time, one-moment flash rape. This There's a lot of people involved. There's a lot of people in the community who are aware of it. And there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done that I think law enforcement will do. And it's going to take people like Anonymous to actually go and put a fire under their ass to make it happen. So let's keep this conversation going, Andrew. Let's, uh, let's uh, show some of the things that they've done in 2012. Mm -hmm. If you can actually help me and help the viewers. And let's, let's walk through the viewers of everything. Last January, they did. They performed the Operation Mega Upload. Go yeah. ahead and talk about that. Uh, this is January 19th, January 20th. Mega Upload, obviously, the file sharing site run by Kim.com. Uh, at one point, it was in the top five most visited websites in the entire world. And uh, the FBI and the Department of Justice didn't like it, said it was uh, encouraging copyright infringement, and shut it down. In response, uh, a bunch of Anons got together, and they took down the FBI website. They took down the website for the Recording Industry Association of America, and so on and so forth. And yeah. let's, let's keep going through this. They also attacked the Israeli government website after Israelis launched a deadly um, airstrike on the Gaza region. And they, the Israelis also threatened to cut internet service to the people there. Um, moving on, they did the similar thing in Syria in November when President Bashar al-Assad threatened to take the internet out of the country. They kept the internet going there. Uh, and last month, they actually did exactly what you were talking about. They hacked the Westboro Baptist Church members' uh, website um, because they were planning on picketing the funerals of those kids. So it's been quite a busy year for them, has it not? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And a lot of people don't realize it because a lot of people think that these are just some nerdy uh, computer hackers that are hiding behind screens in the United States who only care about, you know, the lulls, if it were. Um, but no, actually, there's, you know, thousands upon thousands of people spread around over the course of the entire world who are making sure, like, like we said about with Syria and Israel, that people still have open access to information, that people are safe, that people can, can figure out how to get by these hardships when government regimes step in and try to censor the internet or, you know, like we saw in Gaza, kill innocent civilians. So I have um, another quick question for you. I've got two quick questions for you I'm okay. trying to get to. Um, first, what are we expecting from in 2013? Is there any way to know? No, of course not. I mean, if, if, you, <laughs> well, I don't, uh, um, if, you, if you're really interested in finding out what uh, like-minded individuals uh, are doing on the internet, if you, ha if you think that you can relate to some of these things and you can get behind some of these exact missions, you should just go online and look them up. It's, it's crazy to see, like ju just this, this operation right here with the rape in Steubenville, you know, it got picked up by CNN and it 
it got picked up in the Atlantic and people are caring about it and going online saying, how can I help? How can I learn more? And that's how people end up going to these chat rooms. People end up you know, exchanging tweets. Um, so I mean, obviously, uh, no one really tell what's going to happen in the future. But if people who actually think that they can get behind, uh, I don't want to say a common cause, because we never really know how things are going to move. But uh, it's not that hard to go and find other people on the internet who share similar uh, interests and beliefs as you and to carry out a mission with them. It's, it's the whole point of the internet is bringing people together, right? And it certainly does that, the World Wide Web, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that, that is quite interesting is that it's hard to paint them in a bad light because what they're doing, yes, is illegal, but at the same time when they're helping out a, a rape victim, it's, it's hard to say that, that what they're doing is the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, RT Web producer Andrew Blake, thank you so much for uh, weighing in on this topic. Of course, thank you.